So as you can tell today, we're going to be testing fire dampers, showing you how to test them, maintenance, inspection requirements. I want to be clear on what we're not doing. We're not going through the location requirements um, where, where dampers are required by code. Um, so there are several different codes that say where dampers have to be and where dampers don't have to be. Um, so the number one thing that you can do as a facilities manager is, is, is make sure that the dampers that you have are still required. Otherwise, you're paying a company to come out and test it or you're wasting an employee's time for testing fire dampers that don't have to be tested. Um, NFPA 101 allows fire dampers because they are not obvious to the public uh, that, that they can be abandoned in place. You can use lag bolts and bolt them in place. Right now we're at like an air transfer grill on the shaft. So, you know, if we no longer need this shaft, um, I can bolt them open, I can keep them closed, whatever whatever the requirement would end up being. Um, so make sure that you're, you, you look at that kind of stuff beforehand. It's also important to know that uh, NFPA 80, which is what dictates the testing, the installation and testing requirements of fire dampers, does not require a certified individual to test fire dampers. It just requires somebody who's competent. You can prove competency in numerous different ways. So you could insource and have an employee doing your fire damper testing. So that's something to think about as well. Um, understand that fire dampers are rated for different kinds of systems. Uh, they are, they, we have a dynamic HVAC system which continues to operate in the event of a, of a fire. Uh, and you have a static HVAC system that, that does not uh, operate in the event of a fire, shuts down. So understand that as well. Um, it's, it's also very important looking at the fusible link. One of the things um, we encountered, we have a new hospital that was built. After, the year after it was built, me and a co-worker actually went uh, and tested all of the fire dampers ourselves to prove that it could be done internally and to, to build a business case. We're doing an internal service for it. Um, more than 60% of those fire dampers failed. A lot of them failed because of uh, labels that couldn't be read, we couldn't tell what the requirements were, Usable links that were the wrong temperature, screws penetrating frames, or, or fire caulk around some of it. So a lot of different reasons. So there's, there's very minor things there that, that could have been caught during a commissioning process that weren't caught. Um, so when you have those links, when you have your fusible links, understand that NFPA 90A tells you, uh, number one, a lot of the locations are dangerous. It tells you what the link temperature has to be. Approximately 50 degrees higher than the maximum temperature of HVAC. It has to be a minimum of 160 degree length and a maximum of 350 degrees. So that minimum of 160, that's most of what you're gonna find in your hospitals. There may be a few exceptions to that. You may have a damper, like right downstream of a reheat, reheat DAV or something like that that's producing it higher. So keep an eye on that one. But most of those are gonna be 160. Um, it's also important to know newer fire dampers, a lot of them are based on size, they'll have a negator spring. Um, and negator springs, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you a picture of one of them in the comments below, actually pull the damper down. This is a free falling damper here. There's no springs that physically pull it down. So knowing, knowing where those springs are required, and like I said, it's based off of size in most cases, but it pulls that damper down. It's very difficult to get it back up, so sometimes you need some tools and stuff to do that. Um, but a lot of the older dampers, I don't, I haven't ever seen one on an older damper, there may be some, uh, but that's something to think about as well. A lot of the time, your damper testing companies will list, list it out as uh, unable to access, obstructed, something like that. That doesn't give you the right to skip doing that damper. You have to find a way to test that damper. Um, I've seen this a lot in like electrical rooms where conduits are coming in uh, and they end up blocking the damper over time. Um, so those conduits have to be moved. I mean, it's not a, there's no great way to do it, right? But uh, making sure that, that the access to that damper is kind of this sacred space is very important. Um, other things we look for is uh, that, that the track is clear and clean, no screws in it, uh, that there's no caulk in it that would prevent it from falling, from falling naturally. Um, and you've got to inspect that usable link, make sure there's no damage to it, it's not painted. Uh, those are things that would require it to be replaced. So, uh, thinking about all those kind of things. Drew, uh, what else am I missing? Can you think of anything that I'm missing? Um, did you tell about uh, how often 
And they gotta be inspected? Oh, yeah. Frequency, that's important, yeah. So um, you have to test, test those dampers uh, one year after installation, uh, and then four years again for business occupancy, and then uh, every six years for the hospitals. A lot of hospitals have just adopted a program of every four years uh, because of confusion, because we have a lot of mixed occupancy in hospitals. Um, you know, it, it's kind of up to you if you want to do that or not. You know, it could be an extra several hundred dampers depending on the size of your facility. So, um, I, 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 I like to do it based on the code requirements, but really kind of just depends. Um, so, what else? Dry lubrication. Oh, dry lubrication. That's important. So some manufacturers require components to be dry lubricated as well. Make sure you check out the manufacturer's requirements uh, before before doing your tests and everything. Um, and then the last thing you have to do is re-secure that damper in the open position. I'll show you real quick how to do that and then we'll call it good. Try not to be too loud and noisy. Like I said, make sure you always check that label on the fire damper as well. Uh, so some, I'm telling you guys, most of them aren't that easy to do. So I know I made it look easy. It's because we chose an easy spot on purpose. So, but it is something that can be done. Um, and something else, if you're doing it in the middle of summer, wear gloves. It gets really cold. So, all right, Drew, say goodbye, everybody. Wrap See it up. Thanks, guys.